There's something about watching somebody lift with pure passion that reminds me of what it felt like the first time I picked up a weight. Back then, every session featured an excitement and a wonder about what new superpowers I would be endowed with by the end of that workout. That intrigue was addicting. It hooked me and it kept me coming back for more. As valuable as the infatuation with training was in my early days, experience inevitably caused it to fade and be replaced with a more deliberate, more calculated approach. That excitement, I find, also isn't seen quite as much out in the world today. At any gym, you will see teenagers eager to push their lifts, and you'll find competitors adding plates to the bar with a workmanlike focus. But joy, like actual glee during training, is really hard to come by. Now, there are few who embodied joy in training the way that Bud Jeffries did. Bud was a large man, and he did large things. He posted his training on Instagram almost daily and racked up several thousand posts, each one with some unique application of training that resulted in some impossible feat. He lifted exclusively outside in the tall grass, using rusted bars and kettlebells along with rocks, tires, and whatever else was in arm's reach. He usually married different lifts together, doing squats and deadlifts while simultaneously using a neck harness or carrying a boulder. Sometimes his combos became so impossibly odd that the real feat of the day was setting them up in the first place. Bud would also incorporate some functional elements that seemed appropriate for the training of some barbarian orc in a fantasy epic novel. He would fire bows in between kettlebell tosses, throw axes at clay pigeons, test his balance and dexterity and even his endurance. He loved doing bodyweight movements, surely for their developmental effect, but also for the sheer impressiveness. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boy. After all, few men at Bud's size would attempt, let alone clip off with ease, a set of handstand push-ups. Not bad for 209 pounds. His lifts always featured some loosely defined technique that was often massaged to allow for more weight and effort to be incorporated. Here he posted 2,300 kettlebell swings in an hour, almost 60 minutes of continuous swinging. And while the range obviously took a back seat, the difficulty and conditioning required to do something so arduous is very hard to deny. He was a big fan of partials, often doing pin work from the bottom and overloaded work at the top. Here are 900 and 1,000 pound squats from the bottom. Yeah! Now these were far from ass to grass, but they were deeper than most multiply meets. There was no suit, dead stop, and it was done purportedly drug free. But then I quit competing and started following my own path and I got light years stronger. I think you can follow the rules and do it the way that everybody else does, but if you're going to unlock your own potential, you gotta find your own way. Right. And right. I really started to use a tremendous amount of heavy power rack work and, and went into that and just had some, some ways of training that the old, old guys did 100 years ago, and it just unlocked some strength in me that went nuts. In watching Bud's training, I came face to face with my shadow. See, I've been hypercritical of odd object culture since so many in it use the feats for sheer shock value for what would otherwise be a boring Instagram training account. And those who are genuinely dedicated to super deconstructed old timey modes of circus strongman training will usually regress rather than progress as more reliable forms of training and progressing get replaced with a manic selection of exercises, sets and reps that have little to do with each other. So why do I not only hold my criticism of Bud, but actually hold his training career in high esteem. So Bud's training, despite any criticism I might give it, filled a few checkboxes that many other modes of odd training don't. Number one, it was extremely difficult. And I mean really difficult. Not like the feat was hard to pull off, but most of his feats had some dimension of strain, of endurance, of mental toughness that was required to pull it off. Now that can be useful for building mental toughness by itself and apply it to some physical capacity that can be enough to spur adaptive growth. Really the important thing is you can't accuse Bud of having taken the easy way out in his training. Number two, it was varied. He didn't just focus on one thing he was good at, but he aimed to train a multitude of physical qualities from absolute power to neck and grip strength, to raw endurance, to coordination. 
Number three, it made him strong as shit. Now, maybe his training wasn't optimal for peaking specifically for a contest, but the type and consistency of work he did was certainly enough to make him physically formidable. Number four, most importantly, he absolutely loved it. In a world without social media, you can be pretty sure that Bud's training would remain unchanged. So the long story short, Bud's style of training feels more authentically grounded than a lot of what I see out there in the internet space. He was a showman, to be sure. He started in church uh, shows of strength with powerlifting legend Anthony Clark. But the things he rigged up in his yard on a daily basis, they weren't completely frivolous or done just for shock factor. He attached his feats to some useful application of strength that he thought had some real world potential to carry over. Now the question is, did it? Would his ax throwing, hammer swinging, and trick bow shots make him a viable stunt double in the next Lord of the Rings movie? Probably not. But a 300 pound strongman with a love of balance and coordination and cardio is likely to be a bit more capable than one without it. This is an example of not letting perfect be the enemy of good and it's a lesson that we can all take from Bud. Any one of us can stop what we're doing right now and get a sufficiently challenging workout or take some steps towards that new goal that we've been wanting to focus on but haven't because we haven't had the time to do it just right. We often end up getting hung up on what is optimal. Now I would be hard pressed to recommend any trainee following Bud's footsteps as a means of getting an edge on size and strength gains but I would strongly recommend taking his example as a reminder that when you really, really, really love to do something, you really need little justification to do it. It is often worthwhile on its own merit. And to a committed student of physical movement, eager to find new challenges and tackle them, the end result is almost always being better than when you started. Now, what do I think about Bud's training? If this inspired you to put on your baggiest Walmart clothing and go into the tall grass to flip rusted pieces of metal, I would issue a caution. Firstly, you really have to pay attention to how much work Bud did. He frequently pushed himself very far, and he did so on a daily basis, and that's evident by the daily video uploads on his Instagram account. To really do this type of from first principles reinvention of training, the amount of experimentation you have to do is really insane. You have to absolutely love it, and you have to be committed to doing the hard work of finding what works day in and day out. This isn't a 30 minute per day, three day per week type of approach. Also, there's no doubt Bud was a freak of nature. Part of it was a predisposition to strength. No matter what method you commit to doing, you do need some genetics to play with in order to get a thousand pound bottom up squat. If you grow faster than the average person, more varied and infrequent methods of training are still going to pay off. At the very least, this type of training should have some thread of consistent barbell work on a normal and predictable progression scheme to add some stability to your training. Also, being able to eat everything under the sun does make growth a lot easier. He was 380 when he squatted 1,000 pounds from the bottom, and he still pulled off an 815 when he weighed 295. Unrestricted caloric intake really is some next level shit when it comes to getting stronger. I would not tell anybody to walk Bud's path and expect similar results. Few of us are this passionate about anything, and when sheer love and motivation is in short supply, you do need structure and consistency to make up the gap, but we can definitely take some lessons from Bud in how to approach life. So Bud was a natural teacher and role model. He produced eight books, then he gave seminars on anti-bullying all over the country. More than five kids last year alone, and this is just the five that we know about for sure, killed themselves because people bullied them but you can help us change that. Bud's family already experienced tragedy when his son Noah passed away. Bud unfortunately and tragically passed away in 2022 during a light training session. He was only 48 years old. Bud left a definite mark on the strength training community and by the people that knew him and vouched for him, he will sorely be missed. So that's all I got for today, guys. Let me know what you think. Have you come across Bud's social media account before? What'd you think of the wacky feats he pulled off? Can you relate to anything that he did on a day-to-day -day basis? Let me know what your experience is in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Until next time, this is Bromley. I'll see you.